Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm. Everyone loves a great shed, right? Well, there are a few here at the 2020 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival, and I would like to show you some on this week's episode of Classic Restos. This is part two of the 2020 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. But before I take you inside the sheds, here is where we're up to so far with the show. This year at QMU, Jan gave us a good yarn on his plain Jane Steel Wheel 1961 Chevy Bel Air two-door post car, stock as a rock. Then Matt appeared with his badass 1968 Charger that's been maxed out totally and the candy apple red paint turned heads all day long. Kerry was next with his 1959 country wagon with the only thing missing was a beach. This wagon themed in surf mode was super cool and his Airstream van that he tows behind was a perfect match. And look at his savings on motel bills. Kerry's delightful partner Ronnie was amazing with her gorgeous 1959 Thunderbird convertible, taking cool to the full in this almost space-aged era styled Bird by Ford. Then it was onto the trader section where Andrew gave us the rundown on obtaining his piece of grass to sell some stuff and apparently he was offered 15 bucks for his beard. Cumu event organiser Ken Galvin always loves a chat. Years ago he started a monster, paving the way for the event running the way it does now each and every year. Luke gave us a rundown on the Jack Daniels barbecue cook-off. Many teams are competing to prove who are the best barbecue connoisseurs. And now it's into the show sheds on part two of the 2020 Cumu Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival New Zealand. Well, here we are in the sensational show sheds. How are you doing, Kelsey? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> not too bad at all, Fletch. That is good. Now, we're going to start the episode today with a bit of a, a heartwarming restoration story. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, I'd absolutely love to. So this uh, car was my dad's. Uh, he brought it in 1984. He purchased it. Um, it was probably the most expensive muscle car at its time, but um, it's, it was his dream car. So he purchased it, uh, was his pretty much a daily driver, loved it, kept it in all original condition. And um, yeah, then it was remained original until about 2014, we had it repainted. Uh, it was repainted by Andrew Town. Uh, he loved it, absolutely loved it. And um, unfortunately he passed away in 2015. He never really got to see it all put back together, so it's taken five years, and it's finally, this is the first time it's ever been basically out of Ian Goodwin's garage, and huge thanks to Ian Goodwin because he's put the entire car back together for the last five years, um, and I can't believe it's actually here today on such a perfect weekend, so yeah. So nobody knowing your dad better than yourself what would his thoughts be now if he could see the car? Oh, I think he'd be so proud, so stoked. Um, although not sure he probably would have wanted it here because he always liked to keep it to himself. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think he'd be so proud, so proud. I think it's, a, it's beautiful that other people stepped in, um, finished off the restoration, and what a glorious car too. We're talking a 68 Camaro, it's got a 396 big block, beautiful interior. Uh, these were an awesome car back in their day and they've really held their own over many decades as well. Um, so from the status perspective, to have the car and the family is just wonderful outright, but then knowing it was your dad's, that's, that's just extra special all day long. Um, now, I don't mean this to be a ridiculous question, but obviously you're going to keep this car forever and ever? Absolutely. I don't think it'll ever leave the family. 
might be in big trouble otherwise. <laughs> well, that's lovely. Well, thank you, Kelsey, for bringing it along. This is the uh, main shed here for the, the show cars of the, of the highest level. And what's really fair about Kumu is that uh, the organiser, Ken and uh, Desmo, what they do, they give, they give you a turn uh, each year. So you might be on the show for one year and then you can come in here the next, which, which keeps things... Uh, you know, nice and fair. Kelsey, again, it's been lovely talking to you. Look, I love the car. Uh, hats off to you guys. Uh, enjoy it. And I know your, your dad will be looking down and uh, I know he, he would be suitably impressed. So well done. Thank you so much, Fletch. <laughs> well, moving through the shed here, I know why you're here. How are you, Trev? I'm good, thanks, Fletch. And you? Oh, great, mate. Great. This is an incredible, what, what, what a custom, the fabrication work you've done here. 1951 Studebaker. You've called it the bomber. Yeah. Where does that come from? Oh, like a bullet nose, a bomber. It looks like an aircraft, you know. It's got that aircraft style, post-war. They were pretty keen on building cars that kind of had that shape, you know. Trev, you've had a bit to do with these studies, haven't you? Yeah, I've been building them since about 1972. This one I had and brought in 72 for 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you could have got them down to 35, Trev. Yeah, I thought I was doing pretty well at that, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, from 1972 till now, long time, you must know every nut and bolt of these cars. Yeah, this one I've rebuilt about four times now, um, but I've done a lot of studies, so I'm a bit of a fanatic yep. on them. Yep. Love them. The Stewed was such a unique styled car, almost to the point where it didn't have any competition, because back in the, in the 50s and 60s, they were just so... Well, uniquely different, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Uh, their, their slogan after the war was first by far with a post-war car. And when you look at the 47s, the back to fronters, that's where this one's body shape started. Um, and they continued on. And once again, they, they, they moved on in 1953 with the really radical um, sport scoop shape, which a lot of the guys race on Bonneville. Yeah. Really slick motor car too, you know. But they're just generally different, you know. They don't they don't fit the American mould, at least not until say '59 when they started building compacts and things like that. Yeah. Trip, tell us the the extent of workmanship. Well, it goes without saying. Just just looking at it here, you've got the rope around it, got mirrors under the car, you've got lights on it. The gold paint is just popping here. It's stunning. Run through the level of work and how long that this project actually took. Well, it's sort of been an ongoing project. As I said, I first built it in uh, 72. It didn't actually look like this then, but it's always been flamed and it's always had a tilt front. But each time I've rebuilt it, I've changed it. About 1980s, she got the big block shave, the 427. Uh, actually, no, she got a 468 then. We've changed it to a 427 now. Um, but she just evolved. Um, most of the panel work was the same, like only recently we've shaved all the gutters off the roof just to, you know, smooth her up. Um, she's sort of been uh, attached to me for quite a long time now, so there's not much more I can do custom-wise with it, you know. With all the fabrication work uh, and customising that has been done, driving as a car in terms of clamps up front, what you've done with brakes, is a, a nice car to drive? Oh, yeah, she's a street car. Yeah, she's a love to drive her. Um, she's a bit old-fashioned in that she runs mostly Studebaker suspension still. Uh, the front suspension's a 62 GT Hawk with a 65 Studi steering box. Um, Bum's a Mopar, uh, 2.9 one to one. A uh, nice cruiser, uh, 427 makes her go pretty well. She's not a screaming racer, but she's a nice car to drive, you know. But I think it's cool that you've kept some of that original componentry. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that would have been similar to what would have been in the studs uh, at Bathurst in the 60s. Yes, that's exactly right, yeah. That's the same suspension as they used then around that era. The, the, the compacts, the little larks and cruisers and the hawks had the, basically the same suspension, and that's what we've got in this girl now. Interesting stuff. Now, your interior, again, you, you just, well, you haven't let the, the side down there either, Trev. Uh, no expense spared there. It's a, a very nice in contrast to the exterior colour of the car. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sort of meant to be complementing, you know, and I've always liked the, the seagull shape that was in the Chevy uh, seats, so we put that in. Um, back seat's standard. Front seats are uh, jappers. <laughs> um, just for a little bit of comfort. She used to have Jag seats in it, but they were a bit big. Um, consoles all custom made, dashboards custom. Um, the original dash frame has been used and we put uh, 280Z instruments in it. Uh, lots of bits and pieces in it from all sorts of cars, but predominantly Studebaker. Good on you, Trev. Well, you're certainly representing the uh, Studebaker fraternity proud here at QMU for 2020, mate. Pleasure, Thanks, mate. pleasure catching up with you. And you too, Fletch. Thank Great to see you again. Thank you. 
Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2020, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2020 Detroit tour with Fletch. Of course, it goes without saying, if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And for more information, go and visit shannons.com.au. Time for Duncan now on today's show, complete with the beautiful timber backdrop. How you doing, buddy? Great, Fletch. How are you? Good, good. Really, really good. Nice. You've got a very nice Falcon here, but tell us, 1965 XP Falcon two-door, beautiful car. What is so special about it? I, I just love the shape, actually. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it appealed to me in 1991 when I bought it and uh, in a barn find, and uh, I kept it since then. By the time you've had the car, uh, of course, uh, you went through the era, we've, we've all been through it, where you took out the six-cylinder, you dropped in the V8s, and I mean, I knew, know you guys in New Zealand do that all the time as well. Yes, uh, and this car, in actual fact, the motor was transplanted prior to me buying it, uh, and that was probably in the mid-70s. It was a barn find, somebody did it as a, uh, it was a custom because in those days you couldn't get any of the American cars into New Zealand, so people put V8s and Cortinas and Populars and uh, Falcons, a uh, six cylinder, anything, it, Holdens, of course. Uh, and uh, of course, it was the Yeeha, you know, the modified brakes. And oh, it was in those days, it was not like the compliance you need today yeah. to put yeah. this car on the road. It was easy modifications back in those days. Oh. I remember the even the tail shaft yoke uh, from a Borg Warner 35 automatic used to fit straight into a C4. Yeah. Uh, just little swap overs like that, you, you, they were very doable. Indeed, and, and, and they were, and they did all this, and they all transplanted in with a little bit of gas torch, a little bit of engineering, and you could fit it all in, cut out a firewall and pock it in, but uh, like this car, uh, when I get went to get it certified uh, this time round, uh, that was a different kettle of fish. Uh, in reality, all the things that we got away with, and even I had a certificate of modification for it from 1991, uh, they just went over it. It's interesting, the interior, there's something about it. Now, it's an early type dash. Uh, the 65, didn't it? Did they not come with a, with a padded section across the top of the dash in 65? Yes, they did. Uh, and when I bought the car in 91, it didn't have any safety belts. It actually it didn't have to have safety belts. Um, but because they had kids, we put safety belts in it. And, and of course, in the old days, that pad that you had across the front was a cash pad. Yeah for you to bang your head against and uh, it was it was worn out and I took it off and I, and funnily enough underneath it was red uh, and white and I and somebody had me messed with the colors whether it was brand new or before but uh, they changed and then the the custom interior is basically original with the tilt seats because it's actually a it's a hard top a deluxe so it's not any fancy car Great job, it is sensational. Um, paint work too, uh, very nice. Now how long are we talking, when was your respray done there? Uh, that's about 12 months ago, uh, uh, two, 18 months ago. Two, yeah. Yeah, took you've, been, you've, been, you've been cracking to get into this shed, haven't you? Yeah, well, I had three weddings to do. My, two of my children, we used it as a wedding car first, and then uh, now. Every time I come over here to New Zealand, I make a comment every episode without fail as to the talent that I've seen here, whether it's fabric, fabricating, uh, spray painting, mechanical ability. You guys are good peddlers over here. You, you do some fantastic work, and it shows every... Every show I turn up at, there's something incredible to look at. And uh, on that note, Duncan, great catching up, mate. Uh, love your car, and thanks for bringing it along to QMU for 2020. Thank you very much. Moving on through, time for bikes on today's episode. How are you doing, Richie? Oh, I'm good, thank you, Fletch. How are you doing? Good, mate, good. This display, sensational every year. Just tell us quickly what you guys are standing for. Well, the New Zealand Chopper Club has put on a display for actually in conjunction with the QMU Car Show 2020 of this year 
and it's been a wonderful journey to actually get here to bring all these fabulous bikes so everyone can enjoy these bikes that we have on display. So Richie, tell us, how does it work? A guy has a bike, he joins the club, he wants some mods done to it and you guys take it from there? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, a chopper, to own a chopper in New Zealand and ride them on the roads that we have here is a very difficult um, example for trying to get around some of these roads that are so tight. But on saying that, you know, we have a, a female in our club, a woman in our club, that's um, actually riding choppers too, so it's, it's for everybody. Uh, the choppers themselves, you know, it's a, an experience to ride these type of bikes. Uh, you can understand that um, they are huge bikes, they look very impressive on the roads, and they, they, they command a bit of control, so yeah. There's no uh, limit to the imagination as far as you can go with them either. Oh, absolutely, Fletch. You know, the imagination runs well. If you have a look around the, um, the uh, shed number two here at the QMU Car Show, which is where we house the New Zealand Chopper Club show, uh, there's so many different types, models of bikes in here that everybody would like a piece of something. Richard, just in closing, there's a, n a nice side of your club uh, that I'm very impressed with, and I, I learned about this last year as well, with the donations to help animals. I, I think that's a really nice touch. Oh, absolutely, Fletch. You know, the club has been in association with our animal welfare, and, and if you look behind us here, we have the um, uh, Ride for Justice, we have the display motorcycle here that's being auctioned off or raffled off. On saying that, Fletch, uh, welcome to the New Zealand Chopper Club, QMU 2020. Good on you, Richie. Look forward to uh, 2021, mate. Thank you. I appreciate that, Fletch. Sean from Poor Justice, how are you, buddy? Good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. You're doing some great stuff for the animals. Oh, thanks, mate. We try. Um, Poor Justice has been around since 2009. Uh, we, we feed 71 uh, rescue shelters around the country, and we've uh, rehomed over 4,000 cats and dogs, so... Yeah, we're out there working it, mate. We've still got other jobs, so it's cool. And many thousands each year come in. Oh, absolutely. It's you know, it's quite sad in a way. Yep. You know, but um, I would like to thank Harley Davidson for sponsoring us this year for our ride for justice. I mean, pretty un uh, we're pretty lucky to have a brand new Harley Davidson lowrider to be raffled off at yep. um, for our next ride for justice. Yep. So. Pretty impressive. Good on you, Sean. Keep up the fantastic work. And the reason that I incorporated this little piece in the episode, it just goes to show all the things behind the scenes that you would never think of in your wildest dreams that these car shows, truck shows, bike shows stand for. So again, Sean, thanks, mate. Thanks, Fletch. You're a legend, mate. When I was a kid, I loved cars. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. Hand built with a stainless steel roof. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. In 71, this was the fastest four door car in the world. Insurance? Shannon's, of course. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. And uh, we're back again, uh, number one shed, which has got everything from stock to cut radical customs, like behind me. Uh, people are only allowed in the shed here once, and then we, uh, we don't invite them, they invite us. Then we've got shed number two, which is full of motorbikes, all custom bikes and all that. Then we've got shed three, which is model cars. What it is, is that we've just got basically a shed full of everything. In uh, Shed 1, we've got uh, display cars, and the quality of them is really excellent, because guys are actually building cars for the shed. So the quality of cars coming out is absolutely stunning. Um, and New Zealand's always had, you know, because we can't get it off the shelf, so hey, 
And what happens, we don't pick them. Like we've got Studi Bakers here that are just absolutely out of this thing. Also, in the bikes, it's like, holy hell, it's like the bikes from hell, mate. Um, they are so radically custom. And, you know, that's the way it is here, you know? So, uh, apparently, um, mate, can't wait till next year again. So, you all come on down here, you know? <laughs> Time now for an Aussie Val on today's episode. It's not just any Aussie Val, it's got an incredible story. Hello Jess, how are you? Hi Fletch, I'm fantastic. You enjoying yourself? Yes, yes, a little bit hot, but yep, all good. Yeah, I know, it's a little warm in here. Now what is behind us is a 1971 VG Ute. It is an amazing car, it's in amazing condition, but the story is even more amazing. Share that with us, Jess. So, um... Probably a couple of months towards the end of last year, uh, just for a split second, the car was put up on Facebook to have a little test to see um, if anyone would be interested in buying it. And of course, I, I woke up and saw it straight away and said I was keen. Um, the previous owner had passed away and hadn't got it legal on the road and the, the, his widow was obviously looking to see if there was any interest for it. Um, we decided to let it go for a while and over a couple of months she, she messaged and said she was quite keen for me to have it um, purely based on the fact that I'm quite a valiant enthusiast. And in the end, I, I was, it came down to this one in a VG wagon and we decided that we would go and have a look at it. Ten, six and a half hour drive down to Wellington and opened a shed door and it, it was sitting in the storage unit looking pretty much like it is today, now, yeah. So basically just, you brought it home and cleaned it up and here it is. Yeah, we did not know what we had brought until we'd cleaned it up and seen it in daylight and we just, we, we had to bring it to Kumu so that people could see just how fantastic work the previous owner had done before he'd passed away. How many miles has the car done? We've driven it into town, into Cambridge, three times, and that's it. So we actually trailered it up here to make sure it stayed in this condition, um, the underneath stayed in that condition, so people could appreciate it. Wow. 1971 VG, it's a 245, it's a four-speed car, uh, a ute, how cool. No damage in the back. As far, what has this thing been delivering in its early life? Cotton wool. There's not, there's not even a mark in the back. No, no marks, no couple of mattresses maybe, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. A couple of mattresses in the back with no roof. No roof, no roof. Don't need a roof at Kumu. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, what are your plans for it? Apart from, you're going to keep it forever, Jess. I, I hope you are. Well, at the moment, it's between this one and my VG Coupe, so can't keep them all. I've just had a, um, a Chevy truck that I had to sell as well to make space for the, for the ute. So if I could keep them all, I'd keep them all. But at this stage, because she's so rare, it's a hard decision. Now, Jess, the colour. A pacer colour? Yes, yes, um, it's a pacer colour, original pacer colour, yes. Yep. The red striping, back from the time, yeah. just love it. And the Wayfarer, the, the stainless badging of Wayfarer, they're carrying through from the 60s as well. I always thought that was a, a nice badge touch to, the, to these utes as well. The utes are rare, there's no doubt about it. The ones that are left, there's some beautiful utes over in Aussie. The guys are going all out with these things, making beautiful examples. This is really up there. We've got some nice paces over there as well. Um, and uh, this ute here is as good as anyone that I've seen. Even when I open the door and look inside the interior, even that is inviting as well. The seats look good. Um, there's no clutter in the interior. There's nothing added. It's, it's plain Jane, but it's nice, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely pristine, and, and like I said, that's why we bought it here. And, and the people that have seen it know the valiance and have, have all had the same opinion. Oh, my gosh, look at it, and look at the state that it's actually in. And I know that the VG Wayfarers in New Zealand are actually really rare. So to find one and find one in this condition, yeah, um, yeah but all the kudos to the, to the previous owner, who unfortunately didn't get to sit on the road, but... Um, Thankfully, my husband managed to yep. finish his, his work for him to a high standard, and here, here she is today. He, he did a good job. And the thing is, to, to think that you drove six hours, to, oh, I didn't think in the North Island you could drive anywhere for six hours. I thought you'd be in the sea. Yeah, almost, almost. <laughs> right at the bottom of the North Island, yes, wow. yeah, yeah. Well, Jess, that is fantastic. I love stories like this. To, to see a car like this, original car, it's been saved, it's got a great home, uh, it looks so good sitting in here. Jess, well done. Thank well done. you, thank you. She's very loved, very loved. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Thanks, Jess. Well, I hope you have really enjoyed the last two weeks' episodes of Classic Restos featuring the sensational 2020 Cumu Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival here in the North Island of New Zealand. 
and I know that you've seen it first on Classic Restos. As I say at the end of every show, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm.